So today I'm going to show you how my garden looks. We are basically at the beginning of winter here in Yandina in the subtropics of Australia. Um, everything is looking pretty good, if I do say so myself. Um, I'm just actually really excited because summer was a complete disaster for me. I ended up giving up in the end. So I'm just really excited that the garden looks so good and I really want to show you how it's going. So these chilli plants have actually been here since the beginning of summer, maybe mid-summer. They've really, really struggled. Now, when it started cooling down, they started doing a lot better, but um, the fruit wasn't ripening. There were lots of green fruit on it, but they weren't turning red. And so I thought perhaps, because this is a little bit of a shady corner, it does get some sun in the afternoon, but it is a bit of a shady corner. See, the problem with this corner is actually that during summer that fence gets so hot. All the, there's so much radiant heat in this corner that everything in this bed struggles. So this won't be a bed forever, but I've got plans for it. But uh, for now, yeah, there's not. It's not worth trying to grow anything in this bed in summer because it's just too hot. So there were lots of fruit in winter, but. I felt that they weren't ripening because it wasn't getting enough sun. So I built this bit of a trellis out of some bamboo and some pickets and stood everything up and now it's all, all that fruit is now ripening. Um, so it's actually doing really well. It's a really interesting, I don't know what it is. We, I was given some seeds and the fruit are actually really big. This is actually a small one. They're usually kind of this big. But um, so I'm not entirely sure what variety it is. And actually, some of the, so they're supposed to all be of the same variety, but some are really big and some are sort of the normal small ones. So, no idea what it is. <laughs> this is what happens when you get given seeds. But they're still, and they're not very hot, but they're super tasty. So there's actually not a lot going on in this bed. I've left these zinnias in here for quite some time. There are some leeks in the front here um, that I grew from, I think, I, yeah, uh, that I grew from seed. Um, I've just put in some coriander um, and there's some pineapple gooseberries, which I realised after I planted that really needed to be in in summer. But I thought I'd give them a go. They need to be in in summer. <laughs> they haven't done anything. And there's a poor on egg, an eggplant that's really struggling too. Now in this next bed, we have this beautiful fennel. So this fennel was actually in here right through summer and really, really struggled. Looked really terrible. I ended up just cutting it off when I kind of re, you know, put compost and stuff in the beds and I've ended up with multiple bulbs. So that is actually something that's really, really cool about fennel is that if you just snip it off under the bulb, it will actually regrow if it's got optimum conditions, obviously. But yeah, to have one struggling plant to then turn into three, it's pretty cool. Here's my sweet basil. I just let go for the bees. And then what have we got going on here? Um, you know, I've got parsley going nuts everywhere in the garden. I've got some coriander over there. Um, and these are actually, these are not leek. These are a spring, a white, they're not a normal onion. They're kind of like a cross between a normal onion and a spring onion. Um, what else have we got? Oh, and a volunteer, don't know whether it's a capsicum or a chilli. Time will tell. Now this next bed is a testament to if you don't mean for something to grow, often it will do much better than if you want it to grow. So I have a bed full of parsley. Just look at it. I mean, we will never eat that much parsley. But anyway, I had nothing better to put in here, so I've let it go. 
and when a couple of them go to seed, I will be harvesting the seeds. Now, I don't know about you, but I always have a favourite bed in the garden, and this is currently my favourite bed. So it's full of uh, snow peas um, that haven't actually flowered yet. Um, so we haven't actually gotten any peas off them, but I'm very excited about um, getting some peas off it. Um, I haven't actually grown a full-size variety before. The only one I've grown previously was a dwarf, and so I'm eternally surprised by how big these plants are. Um, but it's very, very luxurious looking. Now, down the front here, I actually have more of those onions, the cross between an onion and a spring onion. So there's more of those in the front. And then on the other side of those peas, I have some leeks just here. And then um, these are two lines of carrots, which I'm really excited about because I haven't had a successful carrot crop in a while. I actually think I need to do some thinning here. Yeah, they've done really, really well. Very excited about some really good carrots out of the garden. Now this bed is full of, it's got kohlrabi. We really, really enjoy kohlrabi out of the garden. Um, so, and some of these are nearly, they're nearly ready to go. We've got beetroot over the other side there. It's actually really surprising with the beetroot how different it is when you grow it in your garden, particularly in winter. I've found sometimes beetroot, when it's really hot, can be quite bitter, whereas we've had some of the beetroot up from over in that other bed already, and it's so sweet, it's so good. These are actually some long white radishes, and actually, I think a couple of those are actually ready to harvest. So I might be harvesting a couple of those. And then these two here are actually um, Brussels sprouts. So I'm not entirely sure how they are going to go. And actually one here that I thought was dead, which is why I planted these radishes. But it turns out it's not. But, yeah, so don't know whether our cool weather is going to be long enough for the Brussels sprouts. So we're just going to see how we go. Now, some of you might have seen my other video to do with my potatoes. All these pots, I've got 16 pots here um, that are all potatoes. I've got one seed potato in each pot. I am having trouble with them. Their leaves are really thick. Uh, they don't look like normal potato leaves. This is the first time I've actually grown potatoes. They were planted, I believe, late for what potatoes should be planted in my climate. Um, so I don't know whether it's too cold and they're just not enjoying life, like they haven't been able to get big enough before it got cold, or whether it's too cold because they're in pots, not too sure. Anyway, we've, I've brought them out here. I've repotted one into some different soil to see if it was the soil, and I've put all this hay on top. So it's all an experiment. We'll see how we go. I almost forgot my beautiful strawberry wheelbarrow so these are a strawberry it's really small this is the sort of size that you get they're not a normal large strawberry but I just think they're so beautiful and my son comes out and picks them and eats them and I just think they're glorious so they will be here forever so then here we have some some beetroot so I have I uh, harvested a few out of here, but there'll be there's more that's definitely ready to come out. We'll be harvesting some of them soon. That is an eggplant that isn't loving the cold <laughs> right now, but I'm sure once we get some warmer weather, it'll take off and it'll be fine. We have these potatoes. Potatoes. We have these tomatoes. These have been going splendidly, and they've just started to ripen, but I suspect... Maybe it's getting a bit chilly for them. I'm not too sure because the flowers, where are some of the flowers? I see that the flowers are on some of them, only some of them. I don't know, they're actually doing all right now that I come to look a bit closer. Anyway, I'm going to see how they go. It's obviously getting a bit cold for tomatoes at the moment, but we're just going to see. As I say, most things that I do are an experiment. So, um, but there's lots and lots of tomatoes on here. It's just a matter of getting them through until they ripen. And I'm finding that having them, growing them in winter, they don't have the pest pressure that I have in summer. I have so much pest pressure in summer. It is impossible to try and 
keep everything that wants to eat my tomatoes out of my tomatoes, whereas I'm finding only one or two get eaten in winter. So we'll see. We'll see how we go. Now, you see here, <laughs> these two here, these two really big bushy things, I don't know if you can see the number of bees. You probably can't, but they are absolutely chock-a-block full of bees. They are bush basil. So the man next door has three beehives. So I try and keep, this is actually my herb bed. And I knew that that bush basil got big, but I didn't care. And so I planted it in there anyway. We have a change of plan that needs to go, but I'm waiting for my other bush basil to, um, to grow before I cut that back because I don't want to take all the bees' food because we do actually get honey from him. So um, that is actually my herb bed. It's very overgrown. It's got too much bush basil in it um, and not enough of the herbs that we use every day. We've still got rosemary in it. We've still got plenty of um, mint over the way, but that there definitely needs to be some changes there. Yeah, that's pretty much my garden in a nutshell at the moment. It still seems really small. <laughs> I seem to get more and more beds, but there just never seems to be enough room. Not all. I don't actually have all of the room full. I've got some uh, cabbages that were supposed to be planted out by now. I was slow up potting them, and so I actually think I might not get any cabbages out of it so I might be too late what I might have to do is actually go to a nursery and actually get some I I would only grow like a sugarloaf cabbage because we only have a very very short cooler season uh, and particularly now I would I might have time for a cabbage I'm really not sure again it'd be another experiment but yes that's my garden in winter in subtropical Queensland I hope you enjoyed having a look around and I hope to see you again soon